And everybody said, I welcome you back from the great uh, crusade. We are the Lagos State, and we appreciate all the efforts and all the participation and the contribution of the headquarters church, Lagos, Bagada, and all the groups. And I pray the blessings that the Lord has poured on all the people that came will be multiplied in your life, your ministry, your families, in Jesus' name. And thank God we're back. We're not taking vacation. We're not on holidays. We're always available anytime, every time for the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. As the Lord is strengthening a father in the Lord, He will strengthen more all the ministers, all the members, all the sons and daughters and servants of God in Jesus' name. We're eating the same food. We must have the same strength, the same power. The same vigor and the same standing in the Lord in Jesus' name. I'm so very much happy to see you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your people. Thank you for strength from day to day. I pray, Lord, that your grace will never fail in any of our lives in Jesus' name. Speak to every one of us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're coming to Philippians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 14. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus that's what we are talking about tonight pressing towards the mark of the high calling pressing towards the mark of the high calling I Paul the Apostle said I everyone should be able to say I everyone should commit consecrate and the focus on the goal set before us I Press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16. It says, Nevertheless, where to? We have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Pressing towards the mark of the high calling. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, the pursuit of a high calling in Christ. Number two, the purpose of a holy calling in Christ. Number three, the price of our heavenly calling in Christ. We're looking at number one. Number one, the pursuit of our high calling in Christ. We've read those verses already. We're looking at this under three subtitles. Number one, the low condition before the high calling. Number two, the lifting conversion for his high calling. Number three, the lively commitment to the high calling. We're looking at number one, the low condition before the high calling. Here Paul the Apostle spoke about his past. At that time in the past, he thought what he was, what he did was acceptable in the sight of the Lord but eventually he discovered that all those things could not save they were low 
as low could be they were at the lowest of god's expectation christ had come he didn't even know christ the savior had come he didn't know the savior the sanctifier had come he didn't know the sanctifier the baptizer and the holy ghost had come he didn't know the baptizer the strength the power of the lord had come he didn't know the strength and the power the the, uh, the the spirit of god had come and he didn't know the spirit of the lord all he did was by himself before salvation look at this the low condition before the high calling in philippians chapter 3 verse 4 it says though i might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man think it that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh in the flesh not in the spirit not in the grace of god all he says now he was very low the high calling had not come unto him he said i more look at verse five in verse five circumcised the head day that does not save of the stock of israel that could not save of the tribe of benjamin that could not save and hebrew of the hebrews that could not save as touching the law a pharisee an unbelieving pharisee he didn't believe on the lord jesus christ and it was his being a pharisee that made him to persecute the church it wasn't anything high the high calling had not come to him at that time it was very low that was his condition at that time look at verse 6 in verses concerning zeal persecuting the church that is nothing positive that is nothing acceptable and that is nothing to qualify him before the lord touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless that amounted to nothing that's what all the other jews had and they did not submit to the righteousness of god look at verse 7 in verse 7 but what things were gain to me they were gain in the sight of the sanhedrin they were gain in the sight of the pharisees that's what gave him the chance to have a letter of authority from them to go and persecute the christians all those things that you know he had the place he had a position that amounted to nothing that was very low he said now those i counted loss for christ i saw that they were nothing and he couldn't qualify him for anything in the sight of the Lord. It made him low, low, low. Before the high calling came unto him. Look at Psalm 62 verse 9. In Psalm 62 verse 9, surely men of low degree of vanity in the sight of the Lord, all that he was before he met the Lord on the way to Damascus made him vain. Men of high degree are in lie they lied to themselves they thought what they had would qualify them for heaven and it says to be laid in the balance they are all together lighter than vanity all that paul had before the high calling came to him all those things were very low and they made him lighter than vanity isaiah chapter 13 reading from verse 11 and i will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible that man mr saul before he met the lord was mr terrible he was terrible and the lord said all his haughtiness and all his pride it will lay to the ground he was on his way to damascus and the lord jesus christ met him and a light shone and he fell to the ground all his pride and all his uh, all his uh, everyone laid low on the ground those things did not make him great they didn't make him acceptable they made him to be in a low condition before the lord revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 17 revelation chapter 3 verse 17 because thou says i am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked all the things that he took pride 
him in his uh, pharisaic days all those things did he qualify him before the lord he was injurious he was a murderer he was a blasphemer he didn't know he was wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked look at verse uh, 18 there i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear it didn't have the garment of righteousness it didn't have the robe of righteousness by faith all that he had made him naked in the sight of the lord shameful that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see look at verse 19 as many as i love i rebuke and chasing therefore be zealous therefore and repent he needed to repent of all his actions of his character of his behavior he needed to repent of not believing on the lord jesus christ and persecuting the church as many as i love i rebuke and chasten what do you have you have religion that's low what do you have? You have obedience to the law of Moses that is low in the sight of the Lord. What do you have? You have circumcision that's low. What do you have? You have infant baptism that is low. What do you have? You have attachment to a church, to a denomination that is low in the sight of the Lord. All that now we have to get rid of. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent and then in verse 20 it says behold i stand at the door and knock outside i stand at the door and knock all that time that saul was you know moving about religion here religion there persecution there being injurious there and quoting the law of moses there and obeying the law of moses and being righteous in the flesh by himself all that time he needed repentance and christ was outside outside the door of his heart behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door that's the beginning of having and receiving the high calling all the other things low irrelevant vain unprofitable it says if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come in to him and will serve fellowship with him and he with me let's look at number two there number two is the lifting conversion for his high calling what leads up the sinner to get to receive to hear to embrace the high calling is conversion that lifts him up conversion meeting the lord being transformed by the lord being changed by the lord that is the experience that lifts up the man so that he can receive and have the high calling let's look at philippians chapter 3 verse 7 but what things were gained to me those i counted laws for christ i had to give up the things i took pride in so i can receive christ all the things that i thought i earned by myself i did by myself i obtained by myself i, I generated by my strength in human strength i have to give all that up so that christ can come what things were gained to me they gave me credentials among the pharisees they were gained to me they gave me credentials among religious people they gave them you know they gave me in road where people ordinary people could not get to my religion my judaism got things for me they were profitable for me in the flesh not in the spirit in the flesh and he said what things were 
again to me those I counted loss for Christ then in verse 8 it says yea doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord the Sanhedrin they were his Lord the Pharisees they were his Lord the religious people they were his Lord and he said I at my conversion I counted them laws for Christ now that I'm converted and I'm still following the Lord I still have to jettison them push them aside reject them and have nothing to do with them yet doubtless I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things uh, when I gave my life to Christ Paul is saying uh, all those uh, people that gave me authority and gave me the credentials and gave me the certificate and gave me the chance and they gave me recognition because I was trained by one of their greatest teachers and leaders now they turned around to persecute me because I threw their papers back to them I threw their authorities back to them I took the things they had given me before that made me go around to persecute the church I threw it back to them now they turned around and they made me suffer so he said for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that I may win Christ as long as I thought that my religion was as important as Christ I didn't have Christ as long as I thought that all those activities in human fleshly energy recommended me to the Almighty God I didn't have Christ but now I count them but don't that I me win Christ look at verse 9 in verse 9 and be found in him not having my own righteousness you see that all that righteousness of the law as a Pharisee that he spoke about in the earlier verses all those things he said they are my own righteousness and what I have to do now I have to give them up not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith and then in verse 10 that I may know him he said now I knew a lot of you know the Pharisees members of the Sanhedrin and religious people and the Judaizers I knew a lot of them but they can't pave the way for me to get to heaven and there is nothing they could do that would be advantageous for me to make it on the final day my goal now my zeal now my ideal now my ambition now that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death and then in verse 11 it tells us if by any means i might attain to the resurrection of the dead now he has a goal now his life has a meaning and the drive within him is in the right direction if by any means i might attain unto the resurrection of the dead in romans chapter 3 reading from verse 21 romans chapter 3 verse 21 but now the righteousness of god without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets and then in verse 22 it says even the righteousness of god which is by faith the righteousness of god which is by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference look at chapter 10 verse 3 in chapter 10 verse 3 of romans it says for they the jews who are still as blind as i was blind the Jews who were still pursuing their own righteousness as I was in the past, 
they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness their own righteousness their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God all the righteousness of the past before conversion will not recommend Paul or anyone now anywhere to God because they are the righteousness of self-effort without grace they are in the flesh without grace there are people in our world moralists they are called there are people in our world philanthropists they are called there are people in our world good financiers they are if they don't have christ all that goodness all that morality all that philanthropy all that goodness all that i am a good samaritan all the self-righteousness will not recommend anyone unto god and so he said these people have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god look at verse eight in verse eight but what says each the word is nice thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart that is the, the word of faith not the word of self-effort turning over a new leaf living like a moralist no it is the word of faith which will preach verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved he says in verse 10 for with the, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation it is then that Christ makes us righteous free and now we can say that conversion was the gate that opened the door to the high calling romans chapter 6 reading from verse 22 in romans chapter 6 verse 22 but now be made free from sin and become servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life because the in verse 23 it says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord let's come to number three here number three is the lively commitment to the high calling the high calling now has come conversion has taken place salvation has taken place the righteousness of faith has been given and imparted unto him unto us and now there is commitment a lively commitment to the high calling it tells us in philippians chapter 3 verse 13 it says brethren i count not myself to have apprehended i count not myself to have apprehended i'm saved there's still sanctification i count not myself to have apprehended there is sanctification yet there is still holy ghost baptism i count not myself to have uh, apprehended and baptized in the holy ghost but that the gifts of the spirit i count not myself to have apprehended i've got the blessings of god there's still the fullness that we have in christ there is still the fullness of the measure of the stature of christ so any level we are any level he got to he said I've got this, but it's still more. I've got that, but it's still more. I've received this, but it's still more. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This one thing 
I do. Forgetting those six which are behind and reaching forth unto those six which are before. I'm forgetting the things of the past. You see, when we're saved, uh, we give testimony, praise the Lord, I am saved. Praise the Lord, I'm saved. All right, keep that, secure that, uphold that, move on. And let your testimony have a higher grade Praise God I am sanctified I am made holy I am purified I am saturated with the word of God Praise God Leave that now Make that secure Leave that where it is And move on I am baptized in the Holy Ghost Filled with the Holy Ghost Saturated with the Holy Ghost Enveloped, empowered by the Holy Ghost Praise the Lord Keep that, keep that The things that are behind And move on The gifts of the Spirit And the fruits of the Spirit They're still there To make you effective And to make you get to a higher level and you say praise the Lord I've got more of the possession more of the operation more of the administration more of the giving and the gifts of the Holy Spirit praise the Lord leave that there now get to a higher field and move on with well, the salvation sanctification Holy Ghost baptism and the gifts move on so that you are not resting and sitting down because that has happened now I can relax have got all you have not got all brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which have before look at verse 14 i press toward the mark of the price of the high calling the high calling the price the reward, the oppression of the price of the high calling in God, I press toward that mark. My eyes set, my mind focus, the pursuit of wavering, the road straight and express way, and I'm going on without distraction. I'm going on without any other interests and I keep this one goal, my feet on the path, my eyes at the peak, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at Psalm 27 verse 4. In Psalm 27 verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord. For David, one thing have I desired of the Lord. For Isaiah, who had a different ministry and calling than David, one thing have I desired of the Lord. For Jeremiah, that had a calling specific, definite, Beyond that of David, all, all the same one thing have I desired. For you see, Kale, I made me a watchman over the house of Israel. He knew what God wanted him to do. One thing have I desired. For Jesus Christ he came to, to set humanity free. And he set his face like a flint. One thing have I desired. For Paul, one thing have I desired desire for you what's your calling for you what's your ministry for you what has the lord raised you up for to do is different from most is different from that of david you are not going to kill goliath today like david did that was his ministry your own calling the high calling we have in christ one thing have i desired of the lord that i that will i seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life That was for David David was to dwell in the house of the Lord 
but we go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature you cannot sit down idle you cannot stay there folding your hand you cannot say i'm dwelling here i'm living here in my own apartment i never go out i come to church every time and i stay with the church i abide with the church i come in i hear the word of god i go out. god has called you to something more than that he has said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature it is a high calling he calls you for you will concentrate on but for david it says to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple it tells us in romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 28 romans chapter 8 verse 28 we know that all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are the called according to his purpose then verse 29 it says for whom he did for no he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son that's our high calling now we face that high calling to be conformed to the image of his son that's the one thing now that we concentrate uh, concentrate on uh, in my character is there any way i'm not totally conformed i need to check up that because the purpose of the call and my commitment and the one thing i do is to make sure that i'm conformed to the image of his son my love for my for the church of god am i conformed to the image of the son my love to my neighbors am i conformed to the image of his son and my aggressive and fervent reaching out to seek and to save the lost am i conformed to the image of the son the purity of heart the holiness of heart am i conformed to the image of his son that is the high calling and that is the one thing i pursue the one thing i seek after the one thing i embrace and the one thing that i have to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren in first john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 1 first john chapter 3 we're looking at uh, verse 1 it says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not in verse 2 it says in verse 2 beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is look at verse 3 it says every man here is the one thing one thing i do one thing i pursue one thing i consecrate for one thing i commit myself to every man that has this hope in him purifies himself the holiness without which no man shall say the lord purify himself even as he is pure i pray the desire the power the unction the strength the focus to pursue that one necessary thing the lord will give to all of us in jesus name we're looking at number two here number two the purpose of our holy calling in christ number one there's a high calling number two there is the holy calling in second timothy chapter one verse nine second timothy chapter one verse nine look at the calling we have here who have saved us and called us with an holy calling holy calling holy calling 
not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 14. That good thing, high calling, holy calling, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Look at chapter 2, verse 19. In chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having their seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 21. And if a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22, flee also youthful laws, and follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, concentrating on the purpose of the holy calling. Number two, consecrating to possess his holy Christ likeness. Number three, continuing in the pursuit of his holy character look at number one number one concentrating on the purpose of the holy calling the lord called paul the apostle and he declared to him from the very first day of that call the purpose so that he will concentrate he will focus his mind his heart his strength his personality, his skill, everything he had on that solitary purpose. Look at Acts chapter 26, verse 16. It says, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, not for the purpose of extending the Mosaic ministry, no. Not for the purpose of repeating, reproducing the ministry of Joshua, no. This purpose, we must understand when God calls us in the New Testament ministry The purpose for which He had called us And he says to make thee a minister And a witness Both of these things Which thou hast seen And of those things And the which I will appear unto thee And he gives the testimony in verse 19 Verse 19 Whereupon O King Agrippa I was not disobedient Unto the heavenly vision it wasn't an earthly vision. It wasn't um, a kind of temporal vision. It wasn't um, any kind of uh, historical vision that other people had had. And I borrowed that and I picked that up. The heavenly vision, the purpose for which he was called. What the purpose? Look at First Peter chapter 1. Verse 15, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, it says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner 
of conversation. Verse 16, verse 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's the calling, the holy calling, the high calling, number one, the holy calling, number two. It tells us in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7, First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 For God has not called us unto uncleanness But unto holiness He called us to holiness That's the holy calling And that's the holy calling He has given to everyone There is no preference here I prefer that I don't want a holy calling I embrace that But I don't embrace the holy calling I concentrate on that But I don't concentrate on the holy calling There is nothing like that What he has called us for For God has not called us Unto uncleanness But unto holiness Look at verse 8 In verse 8 He therefore that despises He therefore that rejects He therefore that throws away Despiseth not man Throws not away man Rejects not man But God who has also given us His Holy Spirit. It tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, reading from verse 1. It tells us, having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. Not downgrading holiness, perfecting holiness. Holiness, not jet, jettisoning holiness, perfecting holiness, not ridiculing holiness, perfecting holiness, and not abusing holiness, but perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is consecrating to possess his holy Christ likeness consecrating will lay everything on the altar everything that will negate the holy calling anything that will depreciate the holy calling anything that will take the real brightness of the holy calling away from us will remove that and we consecrate ourselves completely unto the holy calling we're looking at psalm 73 and verse 24 thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory verse 25 whom have i in heaven but thee and there is none upon the earth that i desire beside thee and then in verse 26 my flesh and my heart fail it i'm longing but god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 obadiah 1 verse 17 bought upon mount zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of jacob shall possess their possessions god is a holy god and heaven is a holy heaven and the angels of god are holy angels everything in heaven everything about god is holiness holiness unto the lord and when he comes to earth to call us and to select us and to bring us near to himself that same holiness of heaven he won't sit in the heart of everyone he has called and so upon mount zion shall be deliverance shall be salvation shall be conversion and it doesn't stop there there shall be holiness in Hosea chapter 10 reading from verse 12 Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 sow to yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy 
break up your fallow ground if your ground is hardened and rain will not penetrate and the seed will not penetrate break it off cultivate it it says break up that fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you he doesn't want the righteousness to be you know so uh, small and so invisible that he can't see he wants this a rain of righteousness a rain of holiness in our heart on our tongue in our behavior in our character in our christ likeness we look at christ and we have the grace we ask for the grace to live in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives in ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 25 ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives even as christ loved the church Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. Why? Why did Christ give himself for the church? Look at verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word and then in verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy that's what he wants of the church that's why he sacrificed for the church that's why he shed his blood for the church that the church anyone connected with Christ by salvation by redemption anyone connected with Christ in his church that it should be holy and without blemish we're coming to number three here number three three here is continuing in the pursuit of his holy character Christ has a holy character he expects a holy character he has called us with a holy calling and he wants us not just to commence he wants us to continue until the end of time he tells us in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but here a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a nation whose characteristic is holiness whose character is holiness whose conduct is holiness whose comportment is holiness that, that's the that's the church and those are the believers he wants us to be a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should be that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and then in verse 21 it says for even here unto what ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow ye should follow his steps the character of Christ the comportment of Christ the commitment of Christ holiness unto the Lord holiness before the Lord in verse 22 it says who did no sin and he wants us to follow that example that pattern not to do any sin not to commit any sin public or private who did no sin neither was guile neither was deception neither was lying neither was deceit found in his mouth verse 23 who when he was reviled he reviled not again he did not retaliate he did not take vengeance there was no revenge in his character who when he, he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but he committed himself to him that judges righteously verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree 
that we being dead to sin he doesn't want us to continue in sin that grace may abound he doesn't want us to be in the old life where we had been he wants us completely dead to the past life and we should live unto righteousness every day in every situation we should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed look at first john chapter 3 verse 5 first john chapter 3 verse 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sin he doesn't give us liberty to sin and add sin to our lives and make us become greater sinners because he has saved us now because the grace of god is there and then even new new sins invented sins put in never it says it was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin look at verse 6 it says whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever abided in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him neither known him hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them verse 26 for such a night priest became us who is holy that's Christ and we're to have his holy Christ likeness his holy character and we're told is holy is harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens revelation chapter 3 verse 7 in revelation chapter 3 looking at verse 7 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things says he that is holy he was holy on earth and at that time in heaven sending a message to the church through john still holy is the continuous holiness holy character every time on earth in heaven before the angels before the father before men before sinners holy who is holy that he that is true he that has the key of David and he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the price of our heavenly calling in Christ. Number one is the high calling number two is the holy calling number three the heavenly calling the price of our heavenly calling in christ in hebrews chapter 3 from verse 1 hebrews 3 verse 1 wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling you see the connection there holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession christ jesus verse 2 in verse 2 who was faithful to him that appointed him as also moses was was faithful in all his house verse 3 it says in verse 3 for this man was counted worthy of more glory than moses in as much as he who has built the house has more honor than the house look at verse 6 in verse 6 but christ as a son over his own house whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope unto the end whose house we are on the condition we hold fast 
we don't let it go we don't become careless we don't become loose we don't become superficial we don't become like the world around us we hold fast the confidence of the hope we have until the very end look at verse 12 in verse 12 take it brethren heavenly called brethren brethren with high calling brethren of the holy calling brethren of the heavenly calling take it brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Look at verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Then in verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end three things here number one the price he paid for our heavenly citizenship number two the price we pay for the heavenly calling number three the price the reward we are presented for heavenly consistency look at number one number one is the price he christ paid for our heavenly citizenship we're told in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own and ye are not your own christian and ye are not your own members of the body of christ and ye are not your own members of the church of the living god and ye are not your own ministers that ye are not your own in verse 20 in verse 20 it says for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body don't glorify the flesh glorify god in your body don't glorify the world glorify god in your body don't glorify the fashions of the world glorify god in your body don't glorify society don't glorify any personal sin or personal propaganda glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are God's acts chapter 20 the price he paid for our heavenly citizenship acts chapter 20 verse 20 take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God church which he has purchased with his own blood he paid the price to buy to purchase the church with his own blood first corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 he are bought with a price he bought you already you are slave to sin he bought you so you'll not go back and be a slave to sin you are a slave to satan he control your life he has bought you now with a price you not go back and glorify satan you are owned possessed by the world but he bought you from the world called you out of the world you will not go back to the world and be a slave to the world ye are bought with a price be not ye the servants of men first peter chapter 1 
verse 18 in first peter chapter 1 verse 18 for as much as she know that she were not redeemed or purchased of but with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers in verse 19 but or the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish without spot verse 20 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world he had offered that it will come it will pay the price for redemption for salvation for conversion for justification even before the foundation of the world but it was manifested in these last times for you look at verse 21 in verse 21 who by him do believe in god that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in god and uh, so he has redeemed us he has purchased us he has bought us for the price of his blood number two here uh, the price we pay for the heavenly calling the price we pay he has paid the price to bring us in to save us to redeem us to change our lives and transform our lives and give us a place in his kingdom now the price we children of god sons and daughters of god members and ministers in the church of the living god the price we pay for the heavenly calling matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 45 and again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pills verse 46 who when he had found one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it He's saying ministry is not cheap. The work of the Lord is not cheap. Being part of the people that will go into the world and bring sinners into the kingdom, that opportunity is not cheap. It's, it, it's a price, it's a pill of great price. And when we see that, every other thing we lay aside and we sell all. Everything we have, we say, this is all I have. And we give unto the Lord and we have the privilege of being a minister, a servant, pursuing and seeking to save that which was lost. Acts chapter 20 verse 24. And none of these things moved me. Paul the apostle knew there was a price for him to pay for the work the Lord had called him to, for the ministry the Lord had called him to. And he said, none of these things moved me. He said, neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course of joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify that the ministry that the peer of great price that the opportunity that the service surrendered to the Lord and you said whatever I have to pay for that lay on the altar for that it will not come cheap I'm going to give everything so that I will finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God and then in verse 26 he says wherefore I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men verse 27 for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God he wasn't only preaching salvation he preached all the counsel of God sanctification holiness 
purity of heart blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and the power of the holy ghost in our lives everything uh, and one man one wife everything he preached everything the whole counsel of god that was the charge that was the purpose for which he was called and he said i have not shunned i've not been careless in not declaring unto you all the counsel of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. Therefore I endure all things. Challenges all things. Persecution all things. Misrepresentation all things. Stoning all things. Shipwreck all things the persecution that came to him in iconium in Lystra, everywhere he says therefore i endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in christ jesus with eternal glory the price we pay look at verse 11 in verse 11 it's a faithful saying for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him and then in verse 12 if we suffer that's part of the price if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us if we deny him some people say they are saved and saved forever even if they deny the lord at the time of uh, temptation they deny the lord at the time of their trial they deny the lord at the time when they are called to lift up jesus they deny jesus oh they say they will still get to heaven because they are saved and forever saved all the scriptures say no christ says no he says remember lord's wife if we deny him he also will deny us look at uh, second timothy chapter 4 verse 5 uh, the price we pay for that heavenly calling it says in second timothy chapter 4 verse 5 uh, but watch thou in all things at all times in every situation watch because the devil will be looking for your careless moment, prayerless moment. The devil will be looking for the time you want some ease, some comfort. Therefore, it says, watch thou in all things. When temptation comes, when the tempter wants to drag you off your path, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions but glad that affliction comes not because you are a thief not because you are a sinner you're a criminal but before you are, because you are glorifying the lord and he says endure those afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry that's the counsel that the commandment and i pray you will not be weary you'll not be tired you will make full proof of your ministry we're looking at number three here number three here the prize this is what z e prize the reward the remuneration the goodness of the lord and the well done that we have because he calls us to that high calling we responded and day by day we realize we have a high calling and we're keeping ourselves as high to match the high calling we follow on the holy calling and we remain holy in heart holy in life to match the level 
of the holy calling and he gives us the heavenly calling and in heart in mind in response in dedication to the lord we remain heavenly focused because of that he brings a reward because of that he presents to us the prize for our heavenly consistency look at genesis chapter 22 reading from verse 16 and said by myself have i sworn says the lord for because because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son thine only son verse 17 that in blessing i will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies verse 18 and in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because 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 thou hast obeyed my voice you see that word because is not like i'm a minister i'm a worker i'm a leader every minister every worker every leader will be rewarded equally no because thou hast obeyed my voice this I will do unto thee in exodus chapter 23 verse 25 exodus 23 25 and ye shall serve the lord your god and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee you're serving the lord with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind you're serving the lord without a rival you're serving the lord without any reservation you're serving the lord without any retreat going back from the work it says as you serve the lord without reverse without retreat you're serving the Lord without any rival to rival your time that you are giving to the Lord. And then to say, ah, you are giving that to the Lord, give me this also. You're serving the Lord with everything you've got. It says that you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee look at verse 26 and there shall nothing cast the young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days i will fulfill not for you to be idle now if you are to be idle for the next 10 years why should the lord be interested in just keeping uh, a minister you are giving a high calling is not remaining uh, in the high calling or well, the holy calling is not remaining in that holy calling where well, the heavenly calling is not abiding in that heavenly calling how should god be interested and you know just feeding you know, taking care keeping him strong sound healthy when he has abandoned the high the holy and the heavenly calling it's because we live for the, for him it's because we work for him it's because we dedicate ourselves completely without looking back onto him that's why he said and the number of your days I will fulfill. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. 
What does that mean? Does that mean somebody standing still in one place is afraid of the lion of the street? Is afraid of the wild animals on the street? Is afraid of moving on and it stays in one place? No. It's talking about people who are going to confront and engage the enemy. And the people who are on their way to do the will of God and focus on the calling he has given them. And as they move on and march on, and they do not bother about what they are caring about the enemy, as they get to the place of service and the place of ministry, all their enemies will turn their backs to them. Look at uh, Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 18. The prize were presented for heavenly consistency. We're consistent in the work of the Lord. We do not uh, just hitch and run. We do not do it today and then we rest for the next four weeks. But we abide in the work. We're engaged in the work. We're committed to the work. We're consecrated to the work. And we're doing the work he has called us to do in the high calling, in the holy calling, in the heavenly calling. Uh, then he tells us in Daniel, chapter 7 reading from verse 18 but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever look at verse 22 there in verse 22 until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom look at verse 27 in verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him now in Revelation chapter 2, reading from verse 25, Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Do you have anything? I said, Do you have anything? We have the high calling, we have the holy calling, we have the heavenly calling. That which ye have already hold fast. Till I come. Verse 26 He that overcometh and keepeth my works, the ministry, the commitment, the evangelism, the edification of the church, the teaching, everything he has given us to do. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations it will be yours i said it will be yours so keep on moving on keep on the path focused consecrated committed to the high calling to the holy calling to the heavenly calling to the work he has given you to do and you by the grace of god will not miss that heavenly home and you will not miss your reward on the final day in jesus name let's rise up now and commit ourselves to the lord in prayer that god will help you help you help you that you'll not look back you remain you abide in that calling